going to open the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board uh, for July 21st, 2014. Uh, got a, uh, a fairly full agenda this evening. Um, <clears throat> the first thing on that agenda is the uh, continuation of the hearing in respect of the environmental design review of 1098 Mass Ave Verizon. Um, Hi, yes, good Klasnick. evening. Dan Klasnick, the uh, attorney for the applicant, Verizon right. Wireless. Thanks, please. Okay. Yes. Man, I was thinking about this meeting earlier today, saying, well, this is a little different than what I usually do. I usually come here to present something and talk about a particular project, but I know we've been trying to work through some issues that right. are somewhat unrelated. <coughs> um, I guess I was just going to sort of try and recapitulate what we've done to date. Um, that would be after, helpful, I think. Yeah, after we met, After we met first, I think, on June 2nd, you know, the board had asked us to go back, I think, and try and work with the property on a little bit to address some of the concerns and um, to get a little better direction, I think, from the town because we were all, you know, the board was placed in this position too, though I think, which isn't its typical role either, so I can certainly appreciate the need to clarify. So one of the first things that we did is um, we, we sent out letters, um, and this is just a copy for the okay. board, we sent out letters to, you know, four different, we sent one out to the community safety officer, uh, town council, we sent one out to the town manager, and also, um, I think, the board of selectmen's office. And I think, I believe we sent a copy as well to, to Carol. So I was able to talk, obviously, with Carol, and I spoke a couple times with the town council. Um, I, I haven't really received a direct response from, you know, uh, the community safety officer or, or anyone directly. I understand that they have been working with the property and perhaps they don't feel comfortable because I'm not really representing mm -hmm. the property and contacting me directly. But it seems as if this was an ability to facilitate and prompt some action. Um, I think it was reported to the board that in fact the, the, uh, the property owner met on site with the community safety officer, I think it was on July 9th, and uh, they walked the property. Um, you know, we, we did get feedback from the uh, yeah, July 9th. We did get feedback from from the property owner's representative. They thought it was a very good meeting. They thought it was a productive meeting. Um, and then I believe they also have sent a, a letter to this board. I don't know if you received that from, from Carol or if that's something we need to pass out um, from the property owner's council directly in regards to the steps you know that they were proposing to take to address some of the issues and concerns. Um, you know, that the town has expressed. So I think what, you know, what Verizon Wireless has tried to do, and I and through discussions with the property owner, through discussions with town council and Carol, was to really sort of set out a pathway so that we could, we could get to a point where everybody is comfortable that the property owner is behaving in a way that um, I guess the town feels is incumbent upon someone who's operating a business in, in the town of Arlington. So. So, so I guess the most tangible piece of information we have to provide to the board to show that the property owner does understand um, you know, the seriousness of the role is this letter. And uh, I think this was sent in a large part in response to the letter that was sent by the uh, Director of Inspection Services where he made reference to the ability of the town to impose certain fines and a bylaw and also requesting this board to take certain actions in regards to the property. So I think that to me anyway that illustrates that the town has at its disposal the necessary tools to enforce you know, property code violations issues that are perhaps separate and apart from Verizon Wireless's application, which I think as we had discussed on June the second, everyone I seemed to be fairly comfortable with what Verizon Wireless was proposing to do. So, in, I think that we had illustrated compliance with the uh, with the bylaw through our presentation. We had provided, I think, a fairly comprehensive packet of why we need the site, um, how the design was attempted to stealth and you know certainly mirror the existing facilities. So, <clears throat> basically, everything I think that the board has asked us to do, we've tried to undertake to do to the extent it's within our power to do, and we've I think presented a responsible application. Um, there's a clear need in the 
town for this facility. Um, Verizon Wireless has focused its efforts on trying to address those particular network problems that it's having as more and more data demands particularly. So this is, this is certainly something that's very important to Verizon Wireless. I think it's important to the town. And, uh, you know, we're really motivated to try and get this one built and on air and there's time constraints that we're concerned with and we're going to do that and get that done by, you know, this year, particularly as you get into the winter months and that sort of thing and with the build out and the difficulties that weather can, can impose. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> that wasn't too meandering. No, no, I think that was very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, Carol, um, I think maybe you've gotten some other correspondence from that uh, July 9th, or at least some updates, put it that way, uh, from uh, from folks on that July 9th meeting. Maybe you could just give your impressions of what their impressions were. I asked uh, <coughs> the building inspector, Blackburn, and the safety officer, community safety officer, Corey Ratto, if they had a recommendation or a report. And, uh, both of them said they were not comfortable with recommending that the board proceed. They both indicated that they recognize that the board has the right and authority to proceed as it seems fit, but they both said that they were not comfortable with um, proceeding with the application uh, because they, as far as they are concerned, I'm paraphrasing them because this was verbal, and um, they feel that the owner is proceeding as they have in the past with a, a promise to bring the property into compliance until the special permit is issued, and then, <coughs> quote unquote, we won't hear from them. Um, we, we do have the letter that you, you saw from Nicosia Associates um, that I have not received from them yet, but Mr. Klasnick um, received this copy and provided it to me this evening and forwarded it to you here, saying that there is an intention to. So Carol, I'm sorry. So the, the timing on this is you did not receive this letter? I have not this? received this letter yet. Attorney it's addressed Klasnick, to the board. I received it from, um, by way of Mr. Klasnick, by email. Yeah, we had asked the property owner to prepare a letter yeah. to the board um, to, to outline basically their thoughts from the meeting and what they were prepared to do. For me to simply come in here and say, I heard this from the property mm -hmm. owner to me, did not seem to be you know, as effective as having something from the Property Owners Council, where I think they've made, and <clears throat> forgive me if, if I'm incorrect, but I don't know that Mike or the uh, our officer, Berto, had, right. had the benefit of this letter when they made their comments. Um, but I, to me, it seems like this is a firm commitment from Council for the property owner that they're going to file for a special permit, which I think it's directly to what has been the concern that there are these existing special permits that, you know, weren't, I don't know, I, I kind of, I tried to read them myself and it's not entirely clear that, as to what the enforcement was, so I think this is an opportunity to bring everything in under one particular special permit for that particular building and the operation as they're being conducted at this time, so. So, to me it seemed as if this was as far as we could potentially get as getting the assurance from the property owner as to what they were going to do to, uh, to address the concerns about the property. Just a process question. So was it, w were you thinking that this had been provided to uh, the planning director or, or no, you, you expected that you were providing it for the first time? No, no. <coughs> that it was coming through you? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's addressed to the board, but it was written today, right? Right. No, I just, I so, just was curious. So I'm assuming they put it in the mail. Okay. Anything else, Karen? That's really the size of it. Um, in in some, um, very briefly, neither uh, Mr. Byrne nor Officer Recto felt that they were comfortable with uh, recommending that the board move forward. In fact, they said that they felt that the board should wait until the property was brought into compliance and that they did not have any evidence of. Uh, Mr. Rect uh, Officer Recto did say that there, at first their um, vehicles were off of Mass Ave and then he said he did see merchandise vehicles back on Mass Ave. He didn't say how long they were on, on Mass Ave, but um, both Mr. Byrne and Officer Recto 
felt that this was a not, not enough, not enough had been done by the owner to bring the property into compliance for either of them to feel comfortable in recommending the board move forward with approval. Thanks, Carol. Puts all of you in a difficult position. Yeah. Bruce? Um, I had the sense that we would probably not see uh, a great deal of change of behavior uh, by the property owner. Uh, so it's not surprising what Carol reports uh, from the building inspector or the public safety officer. Uh, and since this has just been such an ongoing and continuous set of violations, I don't feel particularly persuaded from Attorney Nicosia's letter that, in fact, the property owner would apply for a new special permit. More than welcome to bring that application if they so desire, or of course they can comply with the existing special permit, but as of now we don't have an application in front of us from the building owner, and based on what Carol is reporting from uh, the zoning enforcement officer and from my own observation at, at the site, the conditions remain essentially unchanged. Um, so my viewpoint on this is that we should deny the uh, special permit because even if Verizon's use at the site is only an incremental addition to the usage, uh, there's already an existing set of violations. And in fact, uh, specific provisions of the bylaw that I find are in violation would be 11.06 F4, which deals with circulation on the site, including parking, and 11.06 F9, which deals with safety. Um, the fact that the parking is inaccessible at the site means that the employees and the tenants and the business visitors at this property find parking elsewhere on Mass Ave and on the adjacent side streets and that impacts the ability to park for other people in the neighborhood. Um, it creates greater congestion in the area and it increases the danger to pedestrians. Uh, so at this stage I, I would go to deny it if I requested a special permit. Christine? I have no reason to restate everything that Bruce just said, but I agree with everything he said. And I was by the site just a few days ago, and I didn't see the parking being remedied, actually. I saw two very large vehicles parked where all the motorcycles used to be parked, which would not be open for on-site parking still. So I'm not seeing full compliance, and you know, I didn't look closely at all the housekeeping elements, and. This owner does have a very long record of non-compliance. So I agree that just going by the, the letter isn't enough. We need to actually see results. I think I concur with my colleagues here. I drove by several times over the weekend, twice today. Nothing has changed. Apparently there were jet skis mm -hmm. out from the property over the weekend at one point for several hours. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to agree with my colleagues as well. Um, you know, from, from my perspective, um, which is my legal background, but, you know, the letter is nice, but it's certainly no commitment. And um, I think we're putting the cart before the horse, unfortunately, if, uh, if we don't have that application in hand and, and, uh, and have it scheduled, uh, frankly, and heard at this point. I think that's the level of trust or the, the lack of trust at this point is that from my perspective, I'd actually want to have the hearing and go through the special permit process uh, completely before um, taking up anything new. So that's that's my view. I do realize that <clears throat> I don't think I closed out a uh, uh, public uh, a comment um, the last time. Probably should have, but I didn't. I don't think so. I'm going to open it up for anyone. Uh, this is in respect of the uh, uh, 1098 to uh, the the special permit for uh, 1098 Mass Ave. Um, did anyone come to speak about that tonight? Okay, great. Uh, then that part is closed. I will close that part. Um, so, um, anything else, Mr. Cousin, before I ask for a vote? Well, we didn't necessarily want to force the board into a decision this evening if that's not where you're comfortable with. 
Um, so, from that perspective, I think we are rather, well, actually, I, I won't speak for the board. I'm comfortable asking for a vote because we've now continued it twice. If my opinion is, is what I've heard from my colleagues is, is if what you want to do is continue it indefinitely, I'm not sure we can even do that. Um, we really need everything else to come in, come before the board, and get that straightened out, and then come back to this. So uh, that's certainly what I'm, I'm hearing from my colleagues. We've continued it several times at this point. There's been several meetings. But there has been no real action by the property owner in respect to this. I mean, you've done everything right in respect to the, the part that you've brought. Unfortunately, as we've talked about before, even your use of the facility, it's the straw that broke the camel's back at this point. I mean, there will be maintenance that has to happen to your things. There will be construction that needs to happen. And the way that building is set up right now, I think what I'm hearing from my colleagues, I don't want to speak for them, is that no one's comfortable with that additional use, that incremental additional use. So, um, what at any time? Or at, I'm sorry. At any time? No, I think I think if, if the property needs to get straightened out, they, right now we have a letter in front of us that simply says, and I'll, I'll read it so so people can tell. There's quite a bit. Um, obviously, it'll be put in the public record. Um, Given the length of time that has gone by since the original grant of the special permits, the tenancy turnover at the premises and parking need changes on the property, the community safety officer has requested that we apply for a, now, a new or amended special permit that will supersede all the antiquated site situations and no longer applicable special permits modifications thereto. We have agreed to do this and will be looking to file that application in the near future. I guess what I'm saying is, and I can go around to my colleagues, but what I'm hearing from my colleagues is, is that needs to happen before I think it makes sense before, before this board would be comfortable that the violations will be cured. We're not getting a sense that the violations will be cured until that happens. I guess the, the difficulty that Verizon Wireless is, is having is that this location is proving to be the only really suitable location because as the networks get more and more mature and the demands upon the networks become greater and greater, the ability to locate on higher buildings or other structures, I mean the, the search area is getting very near, near uh, narrow. narrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. narrow. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, so Verizon Wireless is not really left with you know, really any alternatives. And we, we did go back and re scrub the area. And I did want to offer this supplemental affidavit from the RF engineer um, with the alternative sites that we've looked at and have that placed into the record as well. Um, this really is the only location that we have been able to identify that will service the town of Arlington. I mean, I think to the extent that the town has an obligation to its citizens, it also has an obligation to provide them with the services that they want. And everybody wants this service. So I would hope that what Verizon Wireless has tried to do here is work with the town, work with the board to address issues that are completely extraneous to its application, and that it should be, uh, you know, that it should be encouraged to continue those efforts. Um, um. <clears throat> so I well, would like to... Sure, like please. To That's fine. Yeah, no problem with that. Um, a couple of uh, points to make. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I agree that this is entirely extraneous to the, to the building. I mean, it, you know, the site that you've chosen has issues with the town. It's as simple as that. And um, those, those issues have not been addressed. So while we appreciate and we certainly want to um, help our citizens with the services that they require, we also have a, our, it's incumbent upon us um, as we go through an EDR to look at public safety as well as um, uh, environmental uh, requirements. And right now, I think you 
we've heard now at several meetings that public safety is an issue at that at that premises, given uh, what is going on in the, uh, with the parking and the street and the trailers and everything else. So I, I'm not exactly sure what to tell you on that. I, I can ask my board if they'd consider a continuation, um, but I, I'm not exactly sure when you're going to want to continue to till. Well, what I had thought if it were necessary to continue to the end of August, hopefully that would give the property owner ample time to file an application consistent with correspondence. The only challenge there might be that I'm not sure where, uh, what our meeting schedule is for August. Um, but first I'll turn it over to the board as far as maybe just uh, comments and questions with respect to additional uh, well, from a, a process point of view, I suppose we could continue it. Um, I share uh, the chairman's concern that uh, you know August may not be long enough, both with respect to the meeting schedule, but if they're going to amend or try to amend the special permit and notice requirements, and, uh, the public, public hearing publication, and then the, and the public hearing process itself, um, you know, it could stretch over. It could be a multi-meeting type of hearing, uh, so end of August might, might not be long enough. Um, I suppose the other alternative would be that the uh, application could be withdrawn without prejudice, prejudice and then refiled once uh, there was some clear indication that either the facts on the ground have changed or there's a new special permit that governs the use of the site. I guess I would suggest to the board that there's value to having Verizon Wireless's application pending to what the board's trying to accomplish. Um, so I don't know that you're prejudiced in any way by continuing to the end of August. If we get to the end of August and it hasn't been resolved to your satisfaction, then there's an opportunity to, to do what we need to do to address it. And I would prefer not to, to get to a point this evening where we have to decide whether to draw without prejudice or take a denial and then, you know, People would have to evaluate what they would want to do with the denial from Verizon Wireless's headquarters. I just assume to avoid all that complication by allowing for a, a further continuance, which my clients come to doing until the end of August. If if you're seeking a further continuance, then I think it's very important that there's a very frank and open discussion among us about what needs to happen before the board would be in a position to entertain a continued hearing and I think that we've probably made that clear already but um, you know I, I think if you if the application came around again at the end of August and the situation is the same as it is today we'd be looking at the same set of outcomes you know either denial or withdrawal of the application or I suppose further continuance and it could be continued uh, to a new date cert let me ask just a very practical question. Do you have, only have authority to go out to the end of August? Because I, I don't think that's to anyone's benefit just to go to the end of August. Well, I, I would just prefer to, you know, to have an opportunity to reevaluate it. I think once again, it perhaps serves the board's interest once again to, to oh, have I don't a have, shorter I, time frame. It's, it's a place. different question. It's it's simply, I mean, just practically speaking, and I'm not saying whether we will or won't entertain it. it it's just more, I think, mid-September is, is probably a better a better time on, on something like that. I mean, from the perspective of, not sure what meetings it will be in August. And then secondly, um, you know, for given that and given it's August, I think, uh, thinking that we're going to get through uh, anything meaningful with the property owner prior to mid-September to late September is probably not realistic. Well, um, I have to revisit that each time with my mm -hmm. client's law department, so I don't know if there's anything, once again, that's lost by doing it until the end of August. Well, we may not meet, and therefore, if that's the case, then I don't know how we continue it beyond that. You don't think you're going to meet at all in August? It depends on what's going on. Frankly, I'm not about to meet just for this if no progress is made. <coughs> mm -hmm. So I think that it, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it depends. I, I'm not sure what we have got on the docket. You know, we, we need to go through all that. But I think 
from my perspective, I, I don't know that continuing out to the end of August does any good for anybody. I think it needs to be sometime in September for it to have any meaning. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's the only way that the board will continue it, I don't know that if you're not going to meet in August, I think it's going to be difficult to make any progress in August. No, I certainly hope to. I certainly hope to, but it takes at least two to tango, and it's not in this particular process a lot more than two, more of a line dance. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, we're, we're dealing with August, and, uh, and frankly, if the board has no other hearing scheduled, a, I'd be, just being blunt, I'm not sure I, I, I really see the need of getting the board together simply to continue this if no progress has been made. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Just because uh, if we continue, we have to do it to a date certain. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Well, let's continue with the board. I mean, that's my thoughts on it. I guess I'm interrupted. So. so you're you're shooting for the end of August because of your construction schedule. You're wanting to get it constructed this year. So the shorter yes, the deadline, the quicker. Well, I think it's going to be very very difficult for Verizon Wireless to get through this process, get through the appeal process, get its building permit, and then get it constructed. Um, the August 31st just seemed to be a reasonable time, and that's what I was authorized to, in advance to, uh, to do. Can any of your construction take place in the winter? Yes, certainly. I mean, I and your construction winter. isn't huge. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's a, I can't speak a little bit of a build. Oh yeah, Eric's here. Actually, Eric Wainwright is the construction manager, so he works 24/7. So. I do. I do eight days a week, actually. <laughs> but I mean, it does become more difficult in the winter. I yeah, I mean, just general winter conditions make it more difficult. Uh, Snow ice. Yeah, depending on there's some roof penetrations and whatnot, so you just have to work around whatever potential weather you may incur. But that's just more of a comfort thing. But it certainly can be done. Uh, obviously not. You know, not optimal, but yeah, it could, it, we can definitely construct in a little bit. How long do you think it would be construction on this one? I would say three to four months, you know. Just long? Yeah, it's just, you know, we, there'll be some steel work. Uh, you know, everything has to be approved by the engineer um, once the measurements are taken. This is actually going to be a stick filled shelter, I believe. Um, so, you know, just the, just a the general construction, lead times on uh, on some of our materials, things like that. So that's just a very baseline timeline that we provide. Just uh, always trying to better that, but uh, you know that just gives us enough enough time you know, to uh, to hopefully construct the whole the whole site. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, can I just get the spelling of your name and your title, please, for the record? Yeah, first name's Eric with a C. Last name is Wainwright. W A I N W R I G H D. I'm the construction manager for Verizon Wireless. Thank you. So I understand your dilemma, and it's it's not an easy position for you to be in. Um, I don't think anything should move forward until the special permit is here. So I think that's been established. You've mentioned that you're speaking for the board, but I want to say publicly that I agree with the chairman that definitely the special permit needs to be filed. It needs to be here. We need to see progress on the site being made that complies with the new special permit. So that process could take two months easily. And, you know, we've already had, is it a month of continuances already? Yeah, least, yeah. We've already had a month and there's been one meeting. So if they were moving faster, if there was more progress already, if they had filed their special permit, we would have some motivation. Momentum. <laughs> you know, but we're not seeing any of that happening, really. The letter only came because you requested it, it sounds like, and came today. So, I mean, I'd be willing to meet in August. Okay. Just to, to state that also, if there is progress made if we have a special permit in front of us that we can mm -hmm. see. If there's no special permit, I wouldn't see any reason. So continuing it to August, we can do that. 
and we can meet briefly just to. But we will need to meet if you continue it. We will need to meet. So. If we place the meeting at the end of August, there might be other things on the agenda by then. Possibly. It's a month away. Thank you. I, I don't have anything further to add. Bruce, Andy, have an idea. I actually wasn't at the. Opening of this okay. <clears throat> so I yeah. hold off on any comment. Okay. You just don't want to come to the August meeting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Um, I love coming by on Monday night. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I will um, not be here on August 25th, you which is the last August Monday in August. Yeah, then the next Monday is uh, Labor Day. Labor Day. Ah. So now we're into mid September, anyways. Yeah, because yeah, you, won't, three you, weeks. Won't have a, you won't have anything that can do anything because Andrew, Andy is not part of it. Do you need a not here. That's at least three of us. And you can't watch the video? And be I, part I, of I it. can't. We take a big risk that there won't be someone here. But, um, yeah. Not the end of August. I come back to. I, I wish you had a little bit more leeway from your because um, right now it's looking a little difficult. For, for that August 25th date it won't work. The next week is Labor Day. So, so what are you thinking? I'm going to throw myself into the support. 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I'm sorry, the 9th. Or the, what, is, what is the Monday? It would be the 8th. 8th. 8th or the uh, 15th. I mean, if that's what gets us to a continuance, I will explain that to my clients and uh, the 8th. Yeah, I mean, the alternative is August 18th, which is four weeks away. The letter you have dated July 21st is in respect of a meeting that happened on July 9th, which is two weeks ago. So I ask you realistically. Does August 18th make sense to you? Well, it's difficult for me to speak directly for them. My understanding is they didn't have the benefit of uh, Mr. Joint's letter, perhaps. Uh, but, uh, they, they may not have had the benefit of the letter, but they certainly had the benefit of what's been discussed now for over two months. I, I think you're hearing from the board some sympathy for yourself, but I appreciate that. But, 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 but layered underneath that, and, and more importantly, a concern about safety and additional use given the current use of that or overuse or use beyond the special permits that currently exists. Any additional use, no matter how well intentioned and required by the town and its citizens. We can't just keep turning a blind eye and, and giving every additional use a pass on this until they come into compliance. And we just haven't seen enough activity at this point. So August 18th, in the chair's mind, does not make any sense from a continuation perspective, not only because of schedules, but also just because I, I just don't see the, if you want to come, and I know you can't, but if, if, if well, you can't, so there's no use of you even requesting it. But if you could commit to providing us with a new special permit application by the 18th, then maybe that makes sense. But unfortunately, you can't do that. So, so I would suggest uh, the 8th or the 15th, and frankly, I'd, I'd point to the 15th so that anything, you know, that would give folks the beginning of September to get the special permit to us and at least get people comfortable that they're moving in the right direction. That's my thoughts. It takes three weeks to advertise once oh. a special permit is received. So, so if the board expects um, that's the other thing. to have a hearing before proceeding with this continuance, we I, have to accommodate that three weeks of um, You know, I think at this point the board would love to just see some progress from a I, I'm not saying I'd like to schedule that hearing and and, and you know maybe leave it to the <laughs> chairman at the time, 
uh, to decide the best uh, route forward. But I think from a continuance perspective, I can get comfortable with that mid-September, or at least you know for this to see what kind of progress we're making and give Mr. Klasnik uh, or Attorney Klasnik the ability to tell us that circumstances have changed. Do we have a meeting scheduled for either the 8th or the 15th? Currently on our right now you have a meeting scheduled on the 8th okay. and the 22nd of September. Okay, so um, I mean, I'll, I'll entertain the 8th because that would at least allow us to get to the uh, receiving a special permit and potentially uh, advertising it here. And at least that would show some progress. I'm not sure it'll be enough, but it might be enough to keep the process moving. Anyone else comfortable with you? Good, sounds fine. Okay. Um, so I think procedurally, it, the, I think the applicant has to formally request oh, thank you. the okay. continuance to the aid. And I suppose Mr. Krasnick can do that now. <laughs> yes, I, if please the board, I'd like to request the continuance to September 8th. Okay. Uh, and I guess we should put it on for 7. Yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. I have a letter here that I can change the dates if you want. To. Okay, and we can initial it. That sounds great. Um, so I'll move that the um, hearing for the Verizon wireless facility at 1098 Massachusetts Avenue uh, be continued to September 8, 2014, at 7 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I vote to continue? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think I do. I think because I, yeah, because I it's have procedural. To That's right. Uh, it's it's just procedural. <laughs> <laughs> so that was unanimous. And you're going to watch the video? Yeah. As you, you give me the video, I will watch it. Just in case. What? Just in case. Okay, we only 15. have four of us. I think you said 15 bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Who is up for Carol's name? She's the senior daughter. Too many. Okay. Uh, um, I'll get. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. So then you'll copy this. You'll sign this later. And yeah. I can copy How about that? Dan. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank nice, you. Nice too. to see you again. Nice to see you too. Have a good see August. You. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Hopefully we're in good progress. In yes, that would be nice. We would all appreciate that. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is easement's vote, Arlington Center Safe Travel Project. And I think I see Laura Winner here. Yeah. Watching all the people go. I know. They were all they were here for this, I thought. They were all here for this. Most of it. Turned out. Most Turned out. To Hello, Laura. Hi, everyone. Hello. So, should I start Go with for the it. project? Go for it. Good, please. I think probably most of you have heard about this project. It's a, um, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a another mass dot and federal highway funded project similar to the one in East Arlington, but much smaller. Um, and it is mostly focused on the intersection of Mystic Street and Mass Ave. The initial goal of the project was to connect the two ends of the bike path. You might remember at one time there was a, um, a lot of discussion about the fact that people were riding on the sidewalks. They come out of the bike path right. and they just ride up by Cambridge Savings, Savings Bank Absolutely. and then and try to cross and there were bikes really going in every direction. So um, this project will first and foremost put, a bike, put bike lanes on both sides of Mass Ave in this area. Um, as well as sort of a path from where the bike lane ends near Uncle Sam Park up to the intersection to go through. Um, I did not bring a drawing of the whole project, but um, it's going to put in a, a crossing at Swan Place so that the bikes coming, going in the west towards Lexington will come out and they'll, they'll be encouraged to cross Mass Ave and then go in front of the Jefferson Cutter House. Oh, really? And then cross there and get on the bike path. So, so the bike path is in the road. Oops, sorry. Sorry. So there's a curve <laughs> cut uh, in the island. Because uh, isn't yes. there an island there? Mm -hmm. So yes, there okay. Will be. And and a, a small 
traffic light that will be coordinated with the big traffic light that will be primarily for bikes and oh. pedestrians. Okay. So a new curb cut in the center media. Um, is there, 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 there one that's already there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's going to be a little bit adjusted so okay. that you can go straight. Now you, I think it's beautiful like this. Um, so the federal government, when they have money involved, requires that there be easements for every um, every location where the contractors might either stand on the property in order to move the sidewalk or, in this case, um, where, where they're putting in um, wheelchair ramps, they require a certain amount of clearance. So that clearance cuts into the Jefferson Cutter House property. Um, so there are six easements all around the Jefferson Cutter House property. The One more part. Wait, and one more part. Yes. Um, we've, we always ask people when we ask for an easement, we, they're entitled to some compensation for that, but we always ask them if they want to donate it. In this case, it doesn't make a, too much sense to, for the town to pay the redevelopment board for the easements. We're probably talking about $1,000 or so total for the six easements. Um, so I need, I'm here to ask you to approve donating these easements to the town of Arlington. Um, your, all of your rights are still protected, though, if there was any damage done to the property. You still own the property. It's just that um, you couldn't do anything to block the property in the future. So the permanent easements, you couldn't do anything to block. The temporary easements, you can't block during construction. Only. Or for three years, to be exact, from the date that you vote. Um, this diagram here shows exactly where the easements are. They're really quite small. There's six within these two rooms. Yeah, this is one, and this is five. There's five different locations here within this triangle. I mean, um, rectangle, rather. And the project is approved by... Um, well, it's approved by MassDOT and Federal Highway, and then also it's been through the selectmen. There were, there were four public meetings at various times, and um, it has been approved. So it's an approved project? Yes. It's just up to us to allow the easements to go through. That's right. It's all you're, all you're really allowing, all you're really doing is saying you don't have to pay us for the easements, because the town will take them no matter what. Right. So the easement on the corner here, can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. So I see where the, the ramps are. Is, is this where the sidewalk is going to be? The edge of the sidewalk? Is that where it exists and the new edge is going to be at the back of the permanent easement? Because this is a permanent, oh, not a I temporary see. easement. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it's the back line, if that's going to impact anything in the park itself, like the railroad tracks. I didn't go out and look and see what was right I there on the corner. It's but definitely not going to impact the railroad tracks. It's okay. a good distance away from yeah. the That was my only question. It looks like it's only, if it is the back line, it's only maybe four feet farther back. But that would give you eight foot of clearance. So maybe it is the front line. Mm -hmm. Looks like about eight foot of clearance. And you only need four behind the, the curb ramps usually. So maybe it is still this line. It's hard to tell because this looks the like sidewalk an existing line. Right? The, line the proposed right? sidewalk, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I can bring a construction. Maybe that is it. I can run down and get those. But My only question was if it was going to impact the park, and you said no. there's no impact, so. Yeah. So that's fine. If they have to make it wide for some reason, that's fine. <laughs> Christine may have just answered my question, but on the uh, permanent easements, that are in part of the rectangular box at where the temporary easements are. The reason that those are necessary is because under ADA, ADA requirements, you need to have some additional yes. area behind where the, where the ramp yeah. part is. On these is. types of ramps, you need a certain length. OK. I believe it's six foot. But it depends on if there's any slope there. Mm -hmm. So um, they need what they need here to yep. comply with that type of ramp. This this ramp is a different type of ramp. So on this okay. one, there's a landing space at the top of the ramp yep. that gives you the four foot okay. area, and they're going beyond that, and maybe way beyond that, depending on 
H minus. Okay. And I was initially confused, but I think I get it now that the um, uh, there really are four permanent easements. It's just that there are two easements with these little bitty mm -hmm. slivers of, of, of land. Three, really. Well, yeah. there's three permanent, and then yeah, one, two, two three. temporary. The T's are temporary. And the, right, right. right. Okay. Yeah. Three of the easements are 37, 27, and 30 square feet, yeah. respectively. Those are very small. Yeah, the size is extremely small, so as far as that goes, it makes sense. Yeah, I was more concerned because that is a prominent park and there are features in there. If there was something impacted, that would be another concern. I'm fine. Andrew? I'm fine. Does, does the curb cut already exist? Because I just know. I didn't see the big map. The curb cut on the, um, to get into here? On these guys, yeah. Yeah, this is an entrance to the parking lot. Oh, okay. All right, I'm fine. Yep, just information. I'm fine. I, I get it. it took me a while to figure out that that was the entrance to the park. I do. <laughs> but I, I do well, once I once I figure that out, I'm like, oh, that entrance. Okay. I do remember all the different designs. I just didn't realize this had gotten to this point. Yeah, great it's news. going. Great it's going to happen. I would say next spring. Great news. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. The bike lanes are in the road. They're not on the back of the sidewalk, That's right. right? But okay. we are That's removing some wonder. parking in front of Pinto So um, to give a little more to make the bike lanes safer. Mm -hmm. It's really, there. it's very tight there. There's a lot of lanes of traffic squeezing in. Yes. So the first plan did not remove the traffic and there were a lot of comments saying that um, they felt that it wasn't safe for the bikes in particular. So um, I asked us to remove the parking. Is the final plan online right now to see it? Or is that an earlier version that's up there? Um, probably the final plans are still not online. We're still getting comments from MassDOT, so they probably still need to be drawn. Final, final. Final, final. There's something up that kind of reflects. Yeah, but close I think the 25% is up. Oh, that's all? Yeah. Is that accurate still or not at all? Um, no, it's it's close. Okay. We will get the new ones up. We, uh, the town just launched a new website, so we were in transition for a little while, and we didn't put them up because we were waiting. But now, now we can. We can put up the 75. Check it out. Okay. Um, Laura, is there a special way that you want to do this? Well, I did thing? draft a vote. Okay. Because it's rather long. Okay. Um, I can read it or. Uh, I have copies. Of okay. Well, I'll read it into the record and then someone can move if they so choose. Uh, the Arlington Redevelopment Board hereby approves donation of the following easements numbered XXBE6, XXTE8, XXTE9, XXPE12, XXPE13, XXPE14, as indicated on the plan called Arlington Bikeway Connection at Intersection of Massachusetts Avenue and Mystic Street, Preliminary Right-of-Way Plan, Sheet Number 11 and 13. I think that's Sheets Number 11 and 13. Donation of easements is for purposes of pedestrian curb ramp, construction and sidewalk reconstruction within the project known as Arlington Center Safe Travel Project. The board hereby authorizes, authorizes its chair, Michael Kerr, to sign easement donation forms on its behalf. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Where's sheet number 11 and 13? That's the question. Or is this not the actual sheet? There are no sheet numbers on this. <laughs> right, those are blow ups. Um, it doesn't say sheet number 13. It doesn't say. Yeah, yeah sheet number 13. Where? Okay. It's tiny. Oh, oh you're oh, on that one. Oh, on the big one. Yeah, okay. there's one that says. Right. So this is 13, and which one is 11? Um, you know, 11 shows only the corner, it doesn't show this one, so I didn't. If I both. see. Okay. Um, but it falls on both shades. This is 13. This is 11, so it shows only the corner. Yeah. And 13. The other easements are back here, but they're not showing this one. Okay. okay. Thank you, Laura. Too fast. Did I Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Next on our agenda is the Millbrook District Study Area.
Yes. Do you want to do an introduction? <laughs> Laura and is going to participate in this, and um, David Field, some of you might know our uh, technical planner, David Field, who prepared the map and is working on this with us. Uh, the purpose of this agenda item is to um, try to set the board with your planning board hat on, would try to define a study area for the Millbrook district that the board has discussed for some time now. I uh, remember you held that interesting meeting in December, um, joint meeting with Conservation Commission and Open Space Committee. When boards and committees um, and town staff talk about this, we're finding that it's not clear and we're not all talking about the same thing sometimes um, on the ground. So it seemed time for the board to not establish a district, but to establish a study area for a possible district, a Millbrook district study area. So with that said, um, I want to turn it now to David to describe a little bit about the rationale behind the map alternatives. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so in the spring of 2014, the uh, um, planning department applied for and received a grant from MAPC to study access and impediments to portions of Millbrook from Mass Ave, the Minuteman Bikeway, and the neighborhood surrounding the brook. Uh, it's actually part of a public health grant to basically see if we can work some way into the EDR process or the zoning bylaws to include healthy benefits or options to access the brook from the neighborhoods. Uh, so that was the original idea behind it, and then you know we started thinking, well, what is this geography? What is this area? We don't know. We keep talking about the Millbrook district, but it's not really defined. So we created a series of maps. I think you all have. Um, the impetus for the for them, the first one centered, which is entitled Millbrook Study Area One, centered more on um, <laughs> the activity areas. It was, I was thinking. Uh, so basically leaving out the cemetery and the reservoir because those are already essentially established natural areas and everything else in between would be up for redevelopment in terms of things fronting Mass Ave. Uh, the second option there was the original study area that was in, I believe, the Linear Park Report from 2010 and also I think was used at the Joint Meeting Carol Reference Report from December 19th of last year. Uh, the third option, uh, map number three, and stop me if I'm going too fast, was uh, thinking that it made sense to create a continuous parkway from essentially up by the reservoir all the way through the Millbrook into the DCR property uh, along the Mystic, which then may not be included in the study area itself, but gets you to the Elwood Brook Parkway, which they have a lot of new boardwalk space down there, open space, they're kind of actually doing a lot of work, so it made sense to connect all of Parliament and riverways, really. Uh, and then the fourth one was really a cent center focus, that's basically just Arlington Center. Uh, with the two key properties being there's a really nice channelized brook section behind, I believe it's called No Brook Apartments on Mill Street, and also a very lengthy, well, very lengthy for Arlington section of um, Open Bank Brookway that starts at Wellington Park and goes all the way to, uh, I believe, the DPW. So those are the four for consideration, but, you know, feel free to amend them as you see fit, draw on the maps, whatever you feel like doing. So this study area, can I ask a question? Yep, yeah, please. Yeah. The, the study area is what you'll be studying for the grant? Uh, the current geography for the study area we were working with for the grant was this number two parcel. So this is what you're working with already? That is what we're working with um, for right now, studying the parcels along there. Uh, in general, we still have to address the access to other neighborhoods surrounding the area. Mm -hmm. So that could be incorporated further. And this is also something the Master Plan Committee is going to use, Carol? Uh, I would like this to be the study area that the Master Plan Advisory Committee would consider, or the Conservation Commission, or uh, Open Space Committee. It, if any work that comes out of this could enlarge the district or reduce the district, but at least when we talk about the study area, all town boards, committees, commissions, ad hoc groups, or staff will have a sense of what the redevelopment board thinks the study area should be. David, I have yes. a question. Yeah. Um, there's a little spur here, which I think is that 
a little short little brook. I think it's is it Rymer Street? Is that the Ryder Street? Uh, maybe Ryder yeah. Street. Yeah. But uh, this part I didn't quite understand. Is there? A, There's a brook that runs. Uh, it's a channelized section of I believe it's called No Name Brook that runs right along the bikeway. Okay. So that's actually not part of the Mill Brook itself, but it runs just congruent the bikeway. But the whole thing is uh, channelized on. The and where does it start from and where does it go to? Uh, it pops out right where you see where it starts and goes back underground. Underground there? Yeah, I'm going to write that back. Okay. <laughs> and and honestly, through. most of it, if you're on the bike way in the summertime, you won't notice it. It's all over the little Japanese knobby. But mm -hmm. if you go in the fall or early spring, you can see it. It okay. goes under an underpass, too. It goes it? under an underpass, yeah. yeah. It runs right along the embankment for the old passes. Okay. Hmm. And that's just in there. Oh, wow, there's water here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to add a couple mm -hmm. comments, if I may, just so the board can consider it a little further. Um, there, uh, Cook's Hollow, we recall, there was some yeah. concern about um, access was, um, at one time, you could get right through um, the Arlington Catholic High School athletic field there is no longer access. So you may want to consider whether to include that in the study area or not, since Cook's Hollow is a very important part of Mill Brook. It's open channel, it's historic and natural resource, and it's um, attractive for passive recreation. Um, at the opposite end um, on the west is that very sharp, 90, almost 90 degree jog in the channelized section of the brook near Drake's Village, which um, was, was an attempt to address flooding, but I think over the ensuing decades we've seen that it has exacerbated flooding during really severe storm events. So I don't necessarily recommend this try to be all things to all people, but when you're considering the city area, I want you to be sure you know what's not going in, depending on which map you choose. Or amendments to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll pipe in here, I, I guess. I, what do we think is the benefit of reducing the size? Because obviously, you said that area, uh, the study area two is the one that's currently being used. Yes. Is the notion that if we kind of scale that back a little bit, that we'll be able to focus better on it? Because I kind of agree, you do miss that whole kind of connection up around the res on any of the other uh, study areas, um, as well as, you know, throwing out on the, on the other end as well. So I guess, I guess my own view is, is, I mean, I know it's a lot, but I'm afraid if we, if we scale it back and we don't include that, we won't be thinking of things like the, the issue with the 90 degree jog there, or the uh, the puzzle fields as to what they can bring, because I think that's also not included in any of them other than uh, study area two as well. So, so I, I guess I'm inclined to to keep it rather broad myself. But it, does does that make a difference for your study? It does not. Um, it would not impact the study. You can go larger. You can go smaller. Right. And there's nothing saying that this whole thing can't be phased, of course, at some Correct. point. So this yeah. study area four could become the first intensive planning phase someday, or a piece of this. Yeah, maybe we break it up into pieces. And then it goes out. Yeah. Wasn't right. Meadowbrook Cemetery, I mean Meadowbrook Park, just in the paper, as being somewhere in the cemetery area here? It, it is in the end. Right at the end. Yeah, I saw that. that. Well, it's, where is it? It's right at the end here. It's kind of a um, yeah. shape. Yeah, I wanted right to go, go see that to confested wetlands probably <laughs> with my dog. <laughs> I would like to actually because it sounded lovely. So it's it's I think it would be nice to include that. Since it's a hidden gem, it's a little sure. wetland area, it needs some protection, it might be nice to have access to it. It's within and maybe have better too, access yeah. to it someday. It's in within that too, right? It's within map two, yeah. It's just beyond but I don't think it's Cook's in, Hollow. So it's in, I don't think it's in any of the other. It's in well, map two. I'm sorry, it's in three. map three. It's yeah, I have mixed three. feelings about extending to the Mystic Valley Parkway. It's, it certainly is part of the whole greenway, but you're getting into another river system now. Okay. Since this is called the Mill Brook Study, and that's the Mystic River. Mm -hmm. 
and it's probably been studied at nauseum by this point. <laughs> the Mystic River in general, mm -hmm. um, with the Mystic River Watershed Association, and it is fairly well developed already. The DCR land is it's fairly DCR set land. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really town property. Right. The, the greenway along there, it's a lovely greenway. I walk it all the time up to the Mystic Lake. So I, I think stopping at the Mystic Lake might make some sense as we have on study area two and including the res. So I think study area two is looking is looking good and I like keeping in the park that has the ice rink. I forget the name of the park. Ed Burns Arena. Ed Burns Arena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And once again, study area two is the only one that does have Cook's Hollow, right, Carol? Uh, uh, two, two and three. three, but two and three. three. I think four oh, yeah. is a little too small. I think we want to look beyond sure. just that central area. Is there a reason why on on one and three we did these areas out beyond? Is that the edge of some property? Uh, it is not any intended edge of the property. So with the exception of the first one, I wanted to include the Russell Commons parking lot. As I mentioned, it was this thing like an activity area, and that's where the Commons Park is held. There's other activities there. So. And that where is that on here? Uh, oh, over here. Okay. Yeah. So that's included here. Is that included here? Uh, just this about is Medford here. Street. So the scales are different, so the cemetery is here. Mystic Street. Yeah. This is Mystic Street. Mystic Street. Oh, okay, Actually, so it's not included here. Is there a cook's hollow is on one too? I was looking at my planet. <laughs> yeah, it might make sense to include that. Because that's a that's a key access area. I mean, that's right in the center of town. Sure. To add that in, which you see where he's talking you? about. Christine. Hmm? Which two? It's, which place? it's shown on study area one. It's between Mystic Street, Chestnut Street, and Medford Street. So okay. you can this little corner on area two. Essentially include Russell Park. This little corner. Lot you can see it here. A little bit bigger. Oh, I see. It's not Since included. the farmer's market's there, it's that's not. kind of the center of so town. So you, you just add this little piece on. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so it's the area we just talked about with the easements and mm -hmm. stuff, too. It includes um, a bit more. A bit more. Jefferson Yeah, I think that would be, that whole central area would be important. So there's no magic to these uh, edges five, going five beyond. Foot oh, basically, yeah. From the stream. From yeah. From the road. I see. So that's the um, that's a permitting. Five hundred foot is the permitting. Um, that's the river. Honestly, it was arbitrary. Just, it's not the river front. River front's two hundred. It's a, it yeah, was arbitrary. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think it makes sense to go along the minute man. But. As the boundary line. Yeah, although we have talked about going all the way to Summer Street, haven't we, at times? Yeah. Yeah. We have, but, you know, this, well, let me give the answer this. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm oh, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Sorry about that. Well, I think this basically cut to the chase. The study area two is closest to what I would think would be good. What's important to remember, I think, if I've got this right, and Carol was trying to help me understand this in a phone call, but this is a study area that allows you to get grants to to do what? We currently already have the grant in place now. I think the study area will be for any future grants or studies that we want to undertake for the Millbrook. So, so the Millbrook. Um, it, it's a little bit different. It's good to kind of unstring the whole thing, and it was the way we started to think about it as um, the Millbrook Linear Park. That was kind of the first thing that, that came out of the of the uh, study that was done by the Open Space Committee, and that really has to do with just the brook itself. But what it kind of spurred was an idea about the whole district, which we're calling, we call the Mill District, we're calling the Mill Brook District. And what was interesting about that was that it fell between Mass Ave and the bike path, 
and there it was right in the middle. And it, it was right at the, um, it, it was also bordered by Arlington Center and by Arlington Heights. So that was what we talked about when we did this, which was part of the Millbrook study. That was the same area. So in the long run, it may be that from a more urban planning or zoning point of view, I should say, that there would be a, a Millbrook district which has to do with a special permit district sure. that allows you to create mixed use, create houses, whatever. But for the time being, it seems reasonable to combine the entire brook and go all the way out to the Mystic Lake because then you pick up the whole brook right. and all the way to the reservoir. But what I'm trying to just kind of let everybody know is it, it, it's a study area that then could be refined into districts, sub-districts, buffer right. districts. Okay. So we may say, well, there's the, uh, there's the Millbrook District Development Overlay District, whatever that it gets called. Right. And then there's the um, Mystic Lake Extension to the Linear Park. You know, we'll, we'll end up figuring out how to best delineate everything in terms of the overall master plan and so forth. Sure. So I just want to make that point because there's a lot of confusion every time I, I have to talk about this to say, well, there's the brook, but there's the district. It's the same as the linear park. It's not really the same. Right. The Millbrook district is using bike path, Mass Ave, commercial district, and the brook to create an idea. So, long story short, I'm, I'm sorry to be, take so long, but it, that is a good context to remember. And as far as I'm concerned, I think uh, study area two picks up all the pieces that you may need. Okay. Um, it may be that when we get to the final point of master planning, of zoning, of districting, that there'll be buffer zones on the sides of Mass Ave and even all the way out to Summer Street, as Christine is saying. Mm -hmm. They may be a core Millbrook district and then extension districts and they could have different regulations or different ideas for each one yeah so we've got a long way to go to get but I think for the for your it seems like for your purposes now and to gel everybody's kind of consideration of this I, I think map two is the right one okay now one quick question I had is does the brook really go beyond the reservoir I thought it right in. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and I got that from looking at one of those early studies. I think it might actually pull from the Great Meadow, but I don't know if that's the oh, case. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reservoir is spring fed, isn't it? I thought, I, I thought the Great Meadow fed the reservoir, which fed Mill Brook. Yeah, so I believe by extension. It does come from the But the way this map right is showing it, it's continuing on its merry way. But I, now I want to go up and see it. Yeah. I could really, I want to see that. Can you see this brook running? More? I'm not sure. I haven't gone up to the Great Meadows to check. I'd uh, be interested. No, I mean, the brook on running the north of the res. Where it runs sort of off the page over here to the left. Oh, to the left. The way we... Like right here. Right. Well, actually, it right does. Here. You know why? Because that's next to the parking lot. Actually, that's exactly right because it's next to the parking lot by the uh, by the soccer field. No, that's heard. That's before. Yeah, yeah but it's it's it kind of, but does it go around? But it kind of go is going around. At that point. Heard. It goes like parking this. Lot. See here. Yeah, but think about it because the rest is right back there. Yeah, so it's actually is. coming. It's this point right here. Yeah, but does it does does it go that way? Uh, I don't know because it's in great color. On the extended map that I have, right, unfortunately, it actually does just come up into a big loop. Yeah. Oh, oh, it does right a big loop and, and goes right up the other way. through Great Meadow. And ah. I, I thought it just went no. right in here. And this the third thing is that it comes back this way and comes up and oh, goes in there. It does a big, kind of it does a big loop. Uh, it do, I think it does shape. connect here, though. Yeah. That's is well, that where the bridge is? I think yeah, that's where the bridge is. That's where the bridge is. It connects here, but then it must go all the way around. It connects where? Exactly. Here? Yeah, it connects right where well, up here. That's interesting. It connects right here so at the bridge. Oh, so that's right. right. talking about it. But he's saying it's going it's around. around. That, that place right yeah. down Which is weird. Why would it go around? Yeah. Right. There's a little blue dot there. You think there. about it. I think there's below the red. Right, right, right. And it comes down. Yes. From the map that I did, which was from Mass. So I didn't go do the field work for that. Because there's the baseball field. Right. And there it is where you can't get the kids out. Like they always want to go in there. So, Andy, if we're if we're in the future, maybe thinking of connections 
from Summer Street, shouldn't we include that in the study now? Maybe maybe we should you know, go out to Summer Street. It's a, it's a good question. I guess so. So to that extent, one might be a little bit closer because it does pick up. No, but one is like so short. Or we can just like change it and come out to Summer like Street yeah. in this little area here. Sure. We could, we could add this area in One's if we wanted scary to. Looking. I think that's a part of the And then we were going to add it right there. That's true. They're easy to do. It's better to include it. And I wonder if we shouldn't go up to the roundabout then on Medford Street, which is, you know, there's the two roundabouts. Yeah. Well, there's one that I think that one's up here. Maybe we should go up to that. Because that's where we'd want to pull the path goes over there and we're pulling that path in. So maybe we could continue it up. That's fine. So one, two, three. So three additions? Up to the property line. That gives you the whole yeah, scope. Yeah, this one. Right. This one and then this one. Where are you going on that one? Street Street. So this one I thought we should go up to the roundabout, which is on Medford Street. There's one on Medford and then there's one on... Uh, yeah. I forget the name of the other street. River Street? No. But the parallels, over the that. parallels missed it. Yeah, so... We'll need to yeah, we're not in Arlington one. anymore. Oh, first we're in Medford. In Arlington. Right, so up to that first one and then hug the Arlington line and then come across. Yeah, and, and what about, I actually kind of like your notion of including the yeah. parking yeah. line. Yeah, yeah this one that? and then this one up to Summer Street. So oh, those, those okay. three areas. Oh, one second. Okay. Yeah. One, two, and then yeah. Christine's extension. Christine's extension. Now, <laughs> Is there any drawback to making it that big? Like, once again, I think, once again, this is the study area. So the whole notion is you slice and dice the study area for something tactical and practical, right? I mean, so I think it's fine. Is there any drawback in making it bigger? Like We're not going to put anything on a map. Anyone in the map wants to know what's going to happen to yeah. me. Th that is just where planning staff explain what a study area is. Yeah. Um, so in answer to your question, I think that's the only drawback. Yeah. Sometimes people say, how come I'm not included in the map? You, right. you just, I'm only saying you want to be prepared to explain what it's about and yeah, whether what there and are why. consequences, right? Yeah, what and why. Yeah. But I think Andy's point is well taken, if I understand it correctly. I mean, there will be portions of this that we will begin to think of as a, a zoning district or an overlay district. There are other parts that are going to be open space. Mm -hmm. There are other parts that are buffer zones buffer between zone, yeah. uh, the, the, the new zoning area right. and just, you know, to sort of transition away from that in a way that, that you know, respects right. existing uses that are there. Or you may even find that um, a little um, block not so little that uh, Christine has added between Mystic Chestnut and Mass Ave and Medford Street really has a different identity than the rest of this correct, thing, and correct. saying, "Well, that's more central business district, and we don't want to make that part." But but that's what the you find out through studying it. You know, that's exactly right. You can't make a perfect assumption right now. You just have to go forward with a reasonable area that relates to what we're talking about, which is the core of the town and the Mill Brook. And do you guys agree with the whole not studying the Mystic River? Yeah, yes, I do. Not yeah. do that. I think you guys right, right, do another area for that. Yeah, oh, so and that's, a, that's been done. It's a different jurisdiction, yeah. too, right? And it's, be, uh, and it's not really the middle Yeah, and this little part is also DCR, probably, this little piece here. Yeah, yeah I don't adding, even think you need to add that, but uh, if you think that's... Yeah, maybe we don't because yeah. it is DCR anyway, and it's kind of set. I actually wouldn't. I'd just make it the two areas that you added. Yeah, I think I agree with that. to study it to connect it. Yeah. Well, it is connected. I think there's sidewalks through there. Yeah. I don't ever walk on that side because I go but to the other it, side. But what's it about? Is it, about it goes all the way up. The sidewalks go all the way up to the intersection. Is it about Mystic section. River? It's just the sidewalk along the road, and you're right between, you know, the road here is right at the edge of the lake, right in this area. So there's a sidewalk here. I yeah. think you are going the a little, bike way. I think you are going a little yeah. far afield. Yeah, I would just yeah. let the brook end yeah. and then let, let that be the next That's, that's the, the next connector. Time. That's yeah. Mill Brook, that's a that. Mystic River and so forth. So I would just add these two. I and let, let it just widen out a little bit. What is this green space here? I'm just that's curious. That's Mount Gilboa. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a park, Mount Gilboa? Yeah. It's got the water tower on the top and the hub structure. There's no water tower. 
Oh, no, it's Jersey, Jersey Hill. Jersey Hill. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the house and conservation yeah. land on the yeah. Yeah. Like more yeah. Yeah. So for the record, the current discussion is to add um, the area between Mystic, Chestnut, Medford, and Mass Ave, and is the... Um, and to fill out the zone meeting Summer Street between... The bike path? No, between here and here. So it's this. So this little chunk? Yes. Okay. Got it. And, um, not to add and not adding yeah. the yeah. area beyond Meadowbrook Park. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's our current discussion. Okay. Do you have one of these? I do not. That's for you. And here's some handouts for you. Thank you. Just in case you haven't seen those. Well, we put things. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen all the time. Huh? Andy does that all the time. I know. <laughs> give, right. give me the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, because we none of us could find our copy. We all think oh. we blend our copies to each other. <laughs> you have an online copy for that. Um, I think it's online. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure. And his presentation, I think, is online. But the yeah. Open Space Master Committee That's that report. report. That booklet was presented at a public hearing. That one right there. Public meeting, right? And the other one was presented that one, the by one the Master Plan one? Committee. Yeah. Ah. That was from December. Was that a public right? hearing? Up in the selection hearing? Yeah, that was, but it was, it was, it was a public hearing. hearing. It, was it was a combined meeting. Okay. Yeah, it was a combined meeting. It wasn't a public hearing. Yes, uh, it was a combined meeting, but it was a public meeting. So do you uh, want yeah. us to... Do yeah. you want us to vote on the study area? Yes, I'd okay. like you to consider voting on the proposed study area. As amended. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's the name reason? of this this little zone, Christine, that you added on? It's Russell Russell Parking Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Russell Commons. Russell Commons. I think in the record we'll... Yeah, I did. It explain, explain the, the Chestnut, uh, uh, Chestnut Medford Mass, Street. Mid Mystic Medford. Yeah. Yeah, you can use the roadways as It's just the these two additional areas. Right. Mass Ave to Medford. Include that block. Mystic Street to Medford Street. Right down to Chester. Okay. And summer. And summer connecting. Uh, I can't see the right from Hills Hill to Washington Street, from Washington Street down to. to uh, Almost very expensive. The bike path. Yeah, Summer Street to the bike path. Oh, we might as well make it go to Mill Street. Or yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah may as well just go to Mill Street. It's just yes, easier. It's like yep. Okay. Yep. Just down the Mill Street. So the yep. Business uses there. Do you want to take oh, it? No, I yeah. think that's a good idea. Thank you. Right. You can make out all my scribbles. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So how do we vote on this? Um, I think we can say. May I ask a question, please? Uh, sure. Um, if you could just uh, say your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Elsie Fiore. My address is 58 Mont Street in Arlington. Thank you. And uh, I'm here tonight not knowing this was coming up, but I thought I should try to get back in the swing of things. Especially, and I'm, I'm especially glad I'm here now because I was chairman of the Conservation Commission when Crooks Hollow was mm -hmm. put into existence. So. My question is, when you talk about this being a study area, um, you're going to have the brook, and I'm guessing that it looks like you're going to open it all, which was one of the things that was talked about at the time we originally started working um, on yeah. the hotel. Yeah, and I think we can... Um, but the, the other part of that is, so are you, uh, when you call this a study area, is that studying just... Um, for the purpose of widening this area to make it nice, or are you talking about having possible development on either side of the brook? I think we're we're talking about it simply as a study area. So, uh, and by that we mean that as we get into the master plan, as we get into everything else, we've been trying to define this concept of uh, the Millbrook district. And in order for us to get a better handle on it, people have been talking about things differently um, each time it's brought up. So we're, we're not talking about doing anything specific with this, open it up, change zoning, or anything else. All we're talking about right now is that when the Master Plan Commission, uh, Committee uh, talks about the Millbrook Study Area, when the Arlington Redevelopment Board talks about the Millbrook Study Area, we will all be on the same page with what it is we're talking about. It hasn't been 
there, there hasn't been a common language that has happened. But there, this in no way changes anything in respect to that area that's being mapped, other than to say, this is what we're going to look at when we talk about different things that could possibly happen in respect of a Millbrook district. That we might take different pieces, different commissions might try to say, well, we think this or we think that. But at least we'll be talking in a common language about what the Millbrook district study area, study area is. So then I'll have to come to all of those meetings. Potential. We would love to have you. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, just to amplify Mike's point, we're just really trying to define the geography with yeah. this. We're not saying what goes in it or yeah. how it happens, but what area are we talking about? Well, I also see pictures in, in, in everything, so if you don't mind, and you may or may not see the same picture I do, but on Millbrook Study Area 1, I look at a lady diving with her head up here, and here's her feet. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's got very big feet. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's well on what you said. It's like looking at the clouds, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate the uh, comments. So, um, so I think uh, I think entertain a motion to approve Millbrook Study Area Two with the amendments as proposed. If someone would like to move. I'll move. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it. David, tell me again what your grant study is doing. The grant is to assess access and impediments from the neighborhoods around the brook and the bikeway and Mass Ave to basically better access all the open space that currently exists. So okay. you know, how do you get from parcel to parcel if the intervening parcels are not <laughs> public? So is it's this now going to become your study area for your grant, or that yeah, is already set? Already it's not set. As we, that. I can certainly expand it. And as I said, you know, I needed to expand the He's got his hands behind his back. You've had buffer to talk to for a while. Anyway. Not necessarily geography okay. of the time. I heard we were talking about it tonight. Great. Game loaded for bear. Thank you. you know, no, that's just, it seems like you're More. interested, so I thought I'd feel It's like I have a full day tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> that study was done, I think, in the, is it in the data? Oh, that's your reading oh, for tonight. What do you mean? <laughs> study? Yes, I think 77, I believe I saw it online. Make him happy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that's what it said. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. say right. Oh, that Thank was the original much. study? You're welcome. Appreciate that's it. Also I, I've seen that electronically. That's your comic too, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all should be up there. All right, next item. Um, Thank you. We're running a little bit behind, but that's fine. This is good stuff. Uh, we're going to have a master plan discussion, I think, is next on my agenda. So, Carol, I'll leave it to you as far as uh, beginning the discussion on the master plan. Uh, just some updates to start. Um, the working papers are online, and I, I hope you'll take a look at the discussion questions at the end of each, if you haven't already. It's also a great excuse to go on and take a look at the Newtown website, which is very attractive. Um, so, please... Um, especially try to get acquainted with the themes that are emerging from the papers and the discussions. Um, tomorrow night is the zoning diagnostic that um, the Zoning Board of Appeals is expected, um, the Zoning Enforcement Officer, uh, RKG will present uh, some of the pros and cons of our current zoning opportunities and challenges to try and impediments in the zoning to realizing some of the hopes and dreams that have come out of the planning process so far. Uh, that's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the Central School. There was also the visual preference survey. Uh, I wanted to give you, um, David circulated the results. I wanted to give you the hard copy. Just so you can get an idea of how, we got a picture of, um, Pretty high response rate. Um, it was a very enthusiastic live event, but um, we had a, a, a lot of people. Do you remember what the count was? At the event, I believe it was close to 60, but online it's wow. 650 approximately. Yeah, look at that. Oh, uh, wonderful. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, quite a few more, more than every other side. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good, uh, I think it exceeded expectations. So it's interesting to, to look. I think one shortcoming that I think was unavoidable. When you decide to use visual preference survey with familiar buildings, we all have, uh, I think there's 
an inherent bias towards what's familiar or what's established. And I think that, for the most part, you will see that here. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I do also see that there, um, page 3-28 was a little bit of a surprise. Um, yeah, that is funny. This is um, the long, what used to be the long funeral home, number one, um, at the corner of Mass, Ave, in Cambridge, at the corner of Mass Ave, and I think Beach Street, or it's before Beach Street? Yeah, and the yeah I don't know exactly which one that is. Cambridge Common, Cambridge, and, and that's the new Leslie College building next to it, I think. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say they're neck and neck, but 55% um, thought that this, the building on the right, the second one, was preferred, and 44, which I think reflexively you might not expect that many people to be supportive of kind of a cubist, modernist style. Well, it's funny, but it's also a testament to maybe the pictures. Look at the one on the left. It's a very busy intersection. And then there's the building kind of far away. Yeah. And then on this one, you've got the Cambridge Common, which anyone's had a beer there, they might be appreciative of that particular thing, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a little bit more human scale. I think I, I just I think it's interesting because. I myself like that modernist building. Although it's weird how they just kept that one little facade. Yeah. 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 I didn't know whether they needed to do that because, because of zoning. Yeah, I think it might have been historic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Piece, so. Historic requirement. I'm not sure. So there were um, some things you, you might feel were, um, at, you might look at this and say, oh, that's what I would have predicted. Others, I don't think, are um, appear to be what one might have predicted. This is all to try to help inform the process if the um, recommendations come towards form-based codes or design guidelines. Uh, so this was this was eye-opening, I think, in some respects. But it's also going to help um, with the recommendations that come out. So take a look through here. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, the Master Plan Advisory Committee will have a table at town day and. Just want to emphasize again the working papers. Please take a look. Um, just even if you only have, say, a half hour, just look at the discussion questions at the end of each working paper. And then that, I think, will pique your interest and you'll want to uh, see more about what some of the highlights are. And come tomorrow if you can. Yes, definitely. If you, if you uh, two nights in a row, I know, is a lot to ask. Mm -hmm. but. The next time uh, possible that we won't um, gather here again until September. So I'll try to remember to give you a report if, if you wish on the uh, zone diagnostic. And the joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Master Plan Advisory Committee Redevelopment Board isn't going to happen. It's not scheduled at this time. It may be important to, to, to schedule that as the Master Plan Advisory Committee gets close to some recommendations. I feel that another important step would be to try to schedule some meetings, like some joint precinct meetings with town meeting members. Um, it's not that it's going to be possible. I don't think we have enough people to have one meeting with e for each precinct. But there are some precincts that work together. I think to um, have a Q&A, an informal question and answer, um, informal presentations to the precincts is a good next step to very labor intensive and time consuming and you don't want to start something like that in July and August because you just lose too many people but I think that's something you want to try to Would it be just for an overview or more detail? Overview and also to answer questions, to provide additional information. I just think it's also an opportunity for town meeting members who, you know, I won't, I, I, I never forget after a certain uh, warrant article that was defeated a member came up to me at the break and said, I hated voting against that, but I felt like I didn't know enough about zoning, or I didn't know enough. So this would pr provide kind of a wide open opportunity for, for town meeting members to ask those questions they don't get to ask mm. um, about zoning, the master plan process, and how they're related. Yeah. Why not to make it less labor intensive, group more town meeting more members precincts? together? Yeah. That's the idea. Maybe to get it into four groups. 
some of them all already work together, so yeah. we can start that way. Even if it, <laughs> Just to make make the labor less intensive for the committee, right? We can put town meeting members together. It depends on where we meet. Work together, it, right? We may not be able to meet in public places, which. <coughs> it depends on how large the precincts are. Oh, I see. Uh, so, some towns and cities have done master plan events in pubs and restaurants and diners to try to get more participation to go out where the people are, rather than asking the people to come into the hall or mm. central school. So, Excellent idea. Like, like in the old days, <laughs> you know, a potluck or something. But. Thank you for the uh, hard copy. It's a lot of trees, but I thought it was I think, I, I, hard to see. It's, I think it's, it's interesting. I, I don't think people are scared of density, is what this tells me. I mean, yeah. it's actually... I, I was surprised. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I think they like street walks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Either that or you better have a big parking lot, I think is what it says. Because yeah. like the, the Trader Joe's and the, the Walgreens. Sometimes I think they're voting because... You know, they like, they want to be able to park. Don't change water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or they like going to Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah. Or they like going to Trader Joe's, exactly. So. Uh, the the uh, setbacks of the buildings that were built over existing buildings, they voted both times to bring it out to the face. Yeah. Not to set it right, which yeah. is interesting because it, it's a simpler form if you, it also enlivens the street. Right. But some people would say it's more shadow, it's more height. Yeah. It's interesting that they voted for that. Yeah. So I really do ask the board, your homework is to check out the working papers and make a mental note of any questions you have and or actually jot them down and you can email them to me. We'll try to have an agenda item in September to address anything that um, you observed or uh, any questions you have about the working papers and discussion issues. Okay. That's great, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, the minutes of July 7th, 2014. Uh, comments, Bruce? Uh, a couple. Uh, about the fifth paragraph down, when we were talking about the extensions for the leases at the Department of Met Mental Health and Developmental Services, um, I was wondering if anybody knew who seconded that motion. Yeah. And um, my recollection is that it was approved for the NEL and uh, as was the next one, uh, it approved, uh, was approved for nothing. But I don't have a, I can't remember who seconded that motion. I think we're all there. I think it was Well, a little later on it says Mr. West, but I think it's Mr. Oh, arrived to the meeting. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's meeting. right. But I arrived yeah, before. That's in there. Oh, you did? Okay. okay. Well, I seconded your motion to approve the minutes. Ah. Oh, so that's correct? That one was correct? I think so. I thought maybe that was Mr. West. I, could, I just assumed because you hadn't arrived yet. No, I, I think so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you remember voting on that? The mental health and the... I came in as services. you were wrapping that up. But you remember looking at the minutes? Yeah, I think maybe what it is is Mr. Brunel arrived to the meeting, put that in front of the... Mm -hmm. just move that up. One paragraph. One paragraph that goes in front of the Mr. Fitzsimmons move to approve the June 16, 2015. I mean, we could always say that the after that the motion was seconded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the motion was seconded and, yeah. and uh, approved uh, for the. Is it important to note who makes the motion? No, I, 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 I don't think that's important. No. Nope. Maybe we should start to eliminate that just to simplify the minutes and just say that's true. The motion was approved. Or seconded and approved. The seconded and approved unanimously. Yeah. Or four to one. Or yeah, exactly. And then we'll name the one. And then we'll name the one. We'll them. That's when we'll use the name. Then on uh, the exactly. flip side, um, about the fourth paragraph, Mr. West asked if the proposed was a standard size sign, that paragraph. Um, he stated that he disliked the sign floating in space. And I thought maybe we'll, we should add on the facades. As opposed to <laughs> floating in space. No, I like that floating in space. It's got a nice dirigible or drone aspect yeah. to it that I kind of liked. Um, 
And then at the end of that line, it looks like we may be missing a couple of words. So where the clause begins after the comma, even if it made it longer, even if it made the sign longer. Yeah, it Even if it would make the sign longer, let's see, it's just the one we get the lining with the windows. No, actually, I, it's, it's okay yeah. as it reads. Okay. Let's all strike that. That was it for me. Okay. For me, we've been doing the documents used, or are we not doing that anymore? We are supposed to do that. Okay, so this one had a few documents. It was that whole sign package. Right. I brought the documents with me, and if you need the names, do you want them, or we'll, uh... And maybe we can, if you... That was the um, Steward Medical Group sign package? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have it on my desk. You sure? Because I got it too. You can have mine. Yeah, I have it here too. Um, do I just attach it to for Amy tomorrow? Amy probably has it also, right? Um, she actually does from the decision. Okay, so she's got that. So she can name it however, right? Yeah. And then the leases we used. And then, I don't know, do we use the Verizon package? That we were given that night. We didn't no, really. No, we didn't. We, didn't we just continued it, so we didn't really we didn't use that. Okay. Um, and then I thought in the second paragraph, the board turned to the least extension item on the agenda. Should we say to the Department of Mental Health and Department of Developmental Services lease? Yeah. And then we don't have to name it again. Maybe in the fifth paragraph, there we could just say approve to move the lease extensions and to authorize the chair to sign. Yeah. So we could just move those titles up, Carol, yeah. to the from the fifth to the second. Yeah, one sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll figure. Out, I'll figure out how to explain it to <laughs> Amy. <laughs> okay. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay, and then the one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph up from the bottom, the big paragraph. Uh. The second line, he commented that parking is an issue and that there are a lot more vehicles on the site than it can handle. I think he meant to say on Quincy Street than it can handle, or we meant to write that, because then the parking issues leave only one lane open for cars going to Odyssey Middle School mm. and the employees. I think we were talking about Quincy Street there, but there are a lot more vehicles on Quincy Street. So it's a the site, it should be I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, I remember. I mean, there were a lot more yeah. vehicles on so, site, too, that it could handle. But so it's, at, it's on the, all the way to the left on the third line of the big paragraph. Instead of the site, it should just say Quincy Street. Right. Okay. A lot more vehicles on Quincy Street than it can handle. Okay. And then the paragraph after that, Brenda Hibbard say that there are various belongings on the property, such as motorcycles, batteries, oil drums, and snow blowers. Is that supposed to be on the property line? No, I think on the no, property. No, that's on the property. But they take up the parking spots and everything else. Oh, so then maybe we should say there are various belongings on the parking lot, on the site's parking lot, such as motorcycles. Because you can have that stuff on the property. There's no reason you can't have it on the property. Well, I, I, don't, I think it's her comment. I think that's what she said. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, not. yeah. So even oh, okay. if we're attributing something to uh, someone who speaks at the meeting, yeah. okay. it's got to be it's, what she said. Yeah. So that's what she said, okay. Because I think she was concerned about the oil cans, frankly. The oil drums? She was. I yeah, think, you're I think right. It, I think it was a safety concern about that more than it was anything else. The batteries and the oil drums, okay. Yeah, she was. Okay, then the first paragraph on the flip side, the second line, I'm talking about we're not treating the whole window, just the top. I would say just the top with a one-way window film graphic, full stop, instead of having two sentences there. Okay. I think that would be clear. Being used in strike is? Yeah. Or with a one, or just? Is being used would be struck, and just to okay. add yep. in between yeah. the two sentences with a yeah. and just leave one way window film, film graphic. Period. You could say yeah. one way window film graphic. Okay. 
That was the sign, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the sign. That's it. I think I'm all set then. I'll set too. Yeah, Carol, the only, so you got, you got the approval of the actual uh, votes in both the paragraphs, uh, one, two, three, four, in the fifth and now seventh, because Mr. Brunel arrived in between the two votes, but I just want to make sure, I wasn't sure whether you had put down that both were approved, because the second vote says Mr. Brunel seconded, but doesn't say that it was approved, you know, so. Oh, yes, I, I got that. And you got the one above it, where it's... Uh, Motion was seconded and all the... Okay, the great. Yeah. Thanks. That's all. You're I, I just, oh, sure. I just wasn't sure whether I yeah. could, uh, both paragraphs had changed. That's all I have. Okay. And I'll, motion. I'll move to approve the minutes as amended. Uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, before the last item, I did want to mention that Carol, I, I slipped up. Carol had, uh, Carol, by the way, did you have a nice week? Yes. Good, good. Uh, Carol was on vacation last week, and I had some back and forth with Amy because I had forgotten that Carol had provided us with the sign administration um, recommendations, like uh, the ability for staff to start uh, doing some of the signs when they're the same size, you know, and, and fit with, with what's happened. So I took it off the agenda. I shouldn't have because I was thinking that we hadn't received anything because I'd forgotten that we had gotten something last month. So uh, Carol's going to resend that at some point and get that on to the next meeting's agenda so that we can talk about it. There's been a couple that have come up. Um, for example, uh, uh, the uh, Meat House has mm -hmm. changed signs all the exact same, even colors and everything else, but the same size, and so we're handling that administratively. But, you know, we want to get some some rules in place for that. But, you know, people are doing the exact same size, exact same colors, exact same technology. It really doesn't make sense for staff not to be able to just approve that given the uh, timing of hearings and work. So. Um, so that should be coming, so I wanted to say that. Next is, um, so, as far as meetings are concerned, I think, um, let's see if something comes up in August. Uh, right now, what are we scheduled for in August? Do we have we don't have a meeting scheduled in August. Okay, so we don't have a meeting scheduled in August. I wouldn't expect to have to have a meeting in August. So the next one will be September 8th. Right. Um, so I, I think that'll be, uh, that'll be the next, next one that happens. Uh, which brings me to the last point on the agenda, which is a chair and vice chair discussion. Um, so uh, I think it's We're going to have a discussion, you and I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was wondering exactly. what we're going to discuss. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're yeah. going to discuss a new chair and vice chair. Um, and I guess the question is, is uh, timing on that uh, and what makes sense uh, with August rolling around and everything else? I think now it makes sense myself, although I have a few more things I want to sign, so it might be uh, as of tomorrow if you wanted to do it then. If it makes more sense to pick it up on September 1st, I can take the kind of flame duck August session and we can kind of do it as of September 1st. I think I'm fine with that if you'd rather start cleaning in September. I don't care, so I'll leave it, I'll leave it to the board to can I ask a question consider it. Sure. I think if I'm not wrong, we were making the, the last chair the vice chair. Oh, I thought it was the upcoming chair. So, if, if then how did you want I become, to do it that way? Then how did I become yeah. the vice chair? Oh, you're right, because you were vice chair for Bruce. The, the only re I, I'm up for anything, but uh, the only reason is it gives the chair an experience like you've, got, you've had with, I know, Bruce's. As long as this isn't a backdoor way. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll change the vice the, chair. We'll change the rules and back, back to next time. <laughs> the vice chair has to exactly. become the chair. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's a corollary to the rule. <laughs> that's yeah. a corollary to every other time. <laughs> that's a codicil. Yeah, yeah, every other time. <laughs> but I don't mind the other way, too, I think. I think each way is fine. I mean, well, I mean yeah. I, I've been fortunate uh, to have the uh, former chair be more than happy to help me in all of my endeavors uh, as, as chairman, which has been great. And I've certainly leaned on, on him and every other board member uh, during this whole time. So, And I could certainly be available like that, regardless of whether I'm vice chair or a board member. I mean, I'm, I'm 
certainly happy whether you want that or not is a separate matter altogether. But uh, I didn't be bothering all of you. Are you exactly. kidding? Exactly. <laughs> and and you should. Turns. And let's just be clear, you well, should. Maybe it, maybe so. That includes you. Maybe it makes sense the way you said it, because then Andrew it, would be It kind of, yeah, yeah. And then, and then kind of, okay. personally, I think you can get ready for it and, yeah. you know, all that kind of good stuff. If I you're think that makes it. sense. Yeah, and I can start in the spring and say, you know, soon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Start yeah, yeah, start yeah, yeah, just yeah. to increase your anxiety yeah. as the year goes on. Increased anxiety. So, so do, we, do we nominate or do we? I think nominate and then, uh, and then vote. Yeah, I think right. that's I, it. I move to nominate Christine Skopinski. And I move to nominate Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I move to nominate <laughs> Christine Skopinski as chairman as of, did we say Yeah, what, what? Doesn't matter. You want to do tomorrow? Is that okay? You that's want to take fine. it from there? Unless there's, there's some issues in August that you know Christine. of no. that you need I, to address. There's nothing, there's nothing, so Carol, so we'll always good to grab the power when it's available. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, tomorrow. So as of, <laughs> tomorrow. As of, um, July 22nd. 22nd, yep. And in addition to nominate Andrew Burnell as vice chairman as, as of July 22nd. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Aye. I'm hired. <laughs> no, no, you have to finish I have to, I have to gavel up. I have to gavel up. Down. I just think that, you know, on behalf of the members of the board, Mike, we want to thank you for you know, taking this uh, through the last couple of years, you did a great job. Oh, only one, yeah. You did it was a just one year. So it was. It no. was a long one, but oh, a little oh, bit more than one. Okay. One and a bit. Okay. The one plus years. Uh, you did a fantastic job. So uh, we're thank you. Very much in your debt. Thank I, you. I, very I, much. I like. I also agree with you, Bruce. And I, there are times when I would not have wanted to be in your shoes, <laughs> and when I think that, then I know you're doing a great job because uh, <laughs> handling the the public handling the internal machinations of Arlington, if that's the right word, um, just really navigating through some very tough, not only politically, but also just kind of technically, uh, bringing together all of the things we needed to get our, our land agreement done. That was a great process. I know the credit goes to both of you, but I was really impressed by uh, the way you took over and, and handled some of these issues. So, you set the bar pretty high. Thank, thank you very much. I, I mean, you know, but it's it's corny and everything else. But first off, staff is great, and it's it's great to have such a such a tremendous backbone. But you know, I, I absolutely feel fortunate, and I'm very happy, whether as chairman or a member, of having you know such collegial and uh, and really good people uh, to work with on this board. So thank you, and I mean, I'm just happy that you know I get to work continue to work with uh, with all of you so it's great so thank you and Christine you are going to do great so I, yeah I okay, where those cliff notes all right yep they'll happen it's more calls than cliff notes now you don't have to think about it exactly yeah the bio <laughs> yeah, you, the 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 you won't be able to figure that out right. that's for sure so but yeah. thank you very much I, I really appreciate it and I appreciate all the support so thank you thank you Mike you did a great job I had asked Mike a while back if um, you continue to try to focus on, or kind of specialize yep. on the properties with uh, going forward, and he said he was willing to do that. So I wanted to let you know. Good. And I think that that might be something that I would kind of impart on you, which we've talked about a little bit um, before, and that I think that it, it's a good idea, and I'm not sure. I know. Bruce, for a couple of years, you were doing all of the LDA, and you were doing everything, else, very technical, very everything else. And it was, you know, it, it's a lot to be a chair of this particular board. Don't, um, uh, don't be shy about reaching out for, for help and everything else and, and taking it all, you know, on yourself. Feel free. I mean, I'm happy delegate. to help with, uh, delegate, you know, and I'm happy to help out with the properties if that's what you want to continue to do and everything else. But I, I think it makes a ton of sense given, you know, which is how, how I frankly used Bruce anytime there was an LDA issue. It was like, because you knew it backwards and, backwards and forwards. So it's what, right. it's what you get by being in the, the, the chair role is some type of, ex, maybe a small bit of expertise on uh, at least how things work a little bit. So I would definitely uh, suggest you, you do that. I will take that suggestion. Bit, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. I like that suggestion. Anyway, but thank you all. I appreciate it. And...
I want you to give a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye.